Hey everybody, so today we're going to continue on. This is our, our last lecture of 2020, Kinetic and Potential Energy. Okay, uh, next week we'll begin, uh, we'll have a test next Wednesday over energy, the two lectures we've gone over, the worksheets and all that. Uh, and then next Thursday we'll start reviewing for the semester exam. So, first, Kinetic and Potential Energy. This one's going to be relatively quick. These are concepts that you've uh, learned about previously. Uh, you should have learned in middle school the concept of conservation of energy, that the overall amount of energy always stays the same. So if you add up kinetic and potential at the beginning, it should be kinetic and potential at the end. And that's kind of an important note that I would honestly add to the beginning of your note-taking worksheet is that added together, they're the same value, okay? Uh, if you know the total at the beginning, it's the total at the end. And we're, that's the concept we're really going to focus on when we come back from winter break. Uh, it is called conservation of energy. But for today, I said we're really just going to talk about the basics of the two types of mechanical energy. Because this all fits into that first type of energy that we went over last time. Now, kinetic energy of a moving object is half of the product of the mass multiplied by the square of its velocity. What does that mean? Take a look right here. Kinetic energy, EK, kinetic energy, is one-half the mass times velocity squared. So if you know the velocity, you just square the velocity, multiply by the mass, multiply by 0.5. Okay? Only square velocity. So that means if you were having to find the velocity, if you knew everything else, you're going backwards. How do you get rid of a square if you were going backwards? You take square root. Uh, remember that? We did that a little bit with projectile motion, squares and square roots. Okay, It's going to come in handy on a worksheet tomorrow. But kinetic energy, it's the energy of motion, the energy of a moving object, energy of motion. Is it moving? It's got kinetic energy. Is it sitting still? No kinetic energy. That's the big concept here. Energy due to motion depends on the mass and speed or velocity. Okay. Um, now, because velocity is squared, kinetic energy cannot be negative. Cannot be negative. Because if you square a negative, let's say the velocity is negative. It's falling down. Velocity is negative. Well, negative 1 times negative 1, negative 1 squared, is positive 1. So if it's falling at 1, let's say, then it's going to end up being positive anyways. So it's always going to be a positive number. 1 half mass, velocity squared. I don't know why that circle is in a weird spot, but it is. So, oh, I see why. I didn't make this PowerPoint. Anyways, a one liter bottle of water moving at one meter per second has a kinetic energy of, well, let's plug it in. Mass is one. Always got to be in kilograms. Got to be in kilograms. What's half of one? Half of one is one half. So one half times our mass. And what's 1 squared? I just said it. 1 times 1 times 1 half. 0.5 joules. There's a big bit about what our unit is. It's energy. It's a type of energy, so it's going to be measured in joules. Okay? All right. So how does kinetic energy go up? Well, if you, if you double the mass, you double the amount of kinetic energy. Okay, so if you go have more mass, you have more kinetic energy. It's a straight connection. Double the mass, double the kinetic energy. But if you change velocity, so what affects it the most? If you increase the velocity a little bit, remember velocity is squared. So if you increase the uh, velocity a little bit, well, that little bit is squared. And that's how much you're increasing the kinetic energy by. So this is saying if you triple the speed, it's not triple the kinetic energy. It is three squared. That's nine. It is nine times the kinetic energy. So changing velocity a little bit dramatically increases kinetic energy. Okay. So change the mass? Sure. Change kinetic energy. Change the velocity. You dramatically change the kinetic energy. All right. Like we said, it comes from work, meaning it's a force over a distance, right? Uh, the work done, as work is done, 
kinetic energy increases. More work done, more kinetic energy. That's what this little uh, line at the bottom is saying. More work done, more kinetic energy. Okay. Uh, as you apply more and more force, you're going to get more and more acceleration. You're going to go faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. More and more kinetic energy. Okay. So work and kinetic energy go hand in hand. So because of kinetic energy, braking distances increases square car speed. So what that means, what this little sense here is saying, because of kinetic energy, braking distance increases the square of the car speed. That's really fancy spot, uh, speak for saying the faster you're going, the longer it's going to take you to stop your car. Uh, the more kinetic energy you go, you have. So that also means a heavier vehicle. So if you're in an 18-wheeler compared to a little Volkswagen, the heavier you are or the faster you're going, the further the distance it takes to stop a car. Okay. Now, there's a little section on your uh, notes where it asks you to fill in the kinetic energies. So take a minute, pause the video, fill in the kinetic energies, give this a shot. Remember, what, what should you do first to these equations for these problems? You're going to fill in the kinetic energies in your notes. Uh, well, you have your mass. Of course, you do one half times the mass. But mo main, the main thing people mess up on is they forget to square the velocity. So I recommend start off by squaring the velocity. Okay, the first thing you should do is uh, square the velocity on these problems, okay? So first do nine squared, that's 81, times 0.15, times one half. Fill in the kinetic energies of each, bada bing, bada boom. Okay. Gravitational potential energy. So we're gonna go over a specific type of potential energy, okay? Specific type of potential energy, gravitational uh, potential energy. Okay. Um, now, gravitational potential energy is potential energy due to gravity. Potential energy due to gravity. Okay. The change in gravitational potential energy of an object is its mass multiplied by g and by the change in height. So what's saying is potential energy, EP, mass, gravity, height. Multiply them, get your number. Mass in kilograms. G, gravity, 9.8. Height is in meters. Now, common question, should gravity be negative? No. This is one of those times that you are going to have a positive number. Okay? Leave gravity as a positive number. I know it's different than everything I've been saying the whole year. Leave it as positive. It's an amount of energy. How can you have a negative amount of energy? Okay. It's always positive. It might be a little number, but it's positive. Okay. So leave gravity as a positive number, 9.8. Mass and height. Wait, figure out the mass. Figure out the height. Multiply three numbers. That's it. It's the energy of position, meaning the, the more height you've got, the more potential energy it is. Think about how hard you hit the ground. The higher you are, the harder you're going to hit the ground. That's because you have more potential energy up here than you do down here. Okay? So the higher you are, the more potential energy there is. All right. This heavily container has been raised above the ground level due to its height. It has a stored energy, gravitational potential energy. How do we know that the energy is there? Well... We know energy is there. How you know this space is How do you know potential energy is there? Well, we know that potential energy is there because if you let it go, it's going to thump. It's going to hit the ground. Okay, that's how you know energy is there. It's being stored. The fact that it can be used. Potential energy is the the stored energy. That's what potential energy is. It's stored energy. It's energy just waiting to get out and be used for something. Okay, so in this case. Uh, it's energy due to height, ready to be used. There's other types of potential energy out there. For example, there's one called elastic potential energy. There's chemical potential energy. All sorts of types of potential energy. We're focused on gravitational right now. Okay. 
If the mass of the container goes up, its potential energy will also, well, think about it, if it gets heavier, is it going to hit the ground harder? Yes. So as the mass goes up, potential energy also goes up. If the height goes up, if you raise it higher, we already said this, then potential energy also goes up. Okay. Higher, heavier, more potential energy. Uh, would it be possible to, what if we went to the moon? What would happen if we went to the moon? Does that change how much potential energy there is? Absolutely, because what changes on the moon? The value of gravity. The value of gravity would be less, so potential energy would be less for the same mass and the same height. Okay, so uh, you can only change that g if you go to a different planet or the moon or something like that. Okay, so the gravitational potential energy of an object is the mass in kilograms multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity, g, which is 9.8. Multiplied by the height in meters. Everything I've been saying. How can you give an object potential energy? Gravitational potential energy comes from work done against gravity. So how is it getting energy? Well, to lift something. If I lift up this little stapler here, to lift it up, it's moving. It's got kinetic energy, right, as it's moving up. Energy is literally going from my hand to the stapler, believe it or not. In order to lift it up, it's sending energy to the stapler. Thanks to gravitational energy, it's, it's fighting gravity, pulling it down, so that if I drop it, well, it uses that, that energy. It's given an amount of energy. Remember, like I said at the very beginning, this amount of energy doesn't change, okay? This total energy, it's got potential, and as it falls, it becomes kinetic. It transforms robots in disguise. It transforms into another type of energy, kinetic energy, okay? Leaving the overall amount the same. So if a one kilogram bottle is lifted one meter, it gains 9.8 joules gravitational potential energy. We know that because mass is one, Gravity is 9.8, and height is 1. 1 times 9.8 times 1 is 9.8. Joules is also energy. It's also measured in joules. All energy, work, potential, kinetic, all in joules. Boom. Remember, you can pause this video anytime any time if you need to uh, fill in some more blanks. I'm trying to give you the gist and add some more of your notes so you can use them on the test on Wednesday and semester exam. How much energy does it take to raise a 70 kilogram, 154 pound person one meter off the ground? Let's see. How will we figure this out? Do we know the mass? Yeah. 70 kilograms. Do we know G? 9.8. Do we know the height? One meter? It's one. One. Um, well, we just multiply. 70 times 9.8 times 1 gets you 686 joules, okay? Uh, and then all I want to leave you with as well, finish it off, I want you to do a little practice with calculating potential energy. Multiply the numbers, mass, gravity, height, multiply the three together, get your potential energy. That's it. It's a short, sweet, to-the-point lesson today. Tomorrow we'll get another worksheet, practice these concepts. The key thing to remember with it, besides the fact of just using the equations, is like I said, that the overall amount of energy remains the same. So let's say you're going up a hill. Well, velocity, you have kinetic energy going up to the height, potential energy at the top, and uh, there's an overall, if you add the two together, your height, potential energy, with the velocity and kinetic energy, add them together, you get a total amount of mechanical energy energy okay now like i said we'll practice this more tomorrow that combination of the two uh, so feel free to email your teacher let me know if you have any questions on uh, these two concepts but that's it the last lecture of 2020 i'll see y'all in january